Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we got Larry on board tonight for kind of a flash update. We're going to be on for 30 minutes instead of 15 because there is a lot going on and there's some prophecies that have just come out from a few people that um, I think people should know about if they haven't heard of them. And uh, it relates basically as does the uh, Mandalay shooting down there in Vegas back to Obama. And uh, there's a good reason for it. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, Stuart. Thanks for having me. Um, what's this latest on North Korea and Japan? And and I would think South Korea must be sitting on razor edge right now with what came out of, uh, out of Japan. What do you think? Yeah, that's a very interesting and unprecedented talk coming out of the government of uh, Japan. Uh, Yahoo News is posting it along with a few other ones. It says North Korea threat is critical and imminent, says Japan warns the U.S. and South Korea. Uh, the Japanese defense minister is uh, warning that the threat posed by North Korea has grown to an unprecedented, critical, and imminent level. Now, that's incredible uh, rhetoric to come out of the, the Japanese government. They just don't talk that way, Stuart. Um, and also, at the same time, uh, there's another report by Yahoo who says that North Korea now is calling Trump a lunatic with war fever <laughs> and says that the U.S. as a nation is done. It's over. So that's the rhetoric. I mean, I don't know how the rhetoric can get any bigger. And to chime into that, kind of to dovetail into that, actually, is uh, Drudge Reporting. It's the headline. It says, uh, here's the headlines. Let me read them. It says, uh, USA preps for nuclear bomber 24-hour alert system. Uh, North Korea secretly mass uh, producing uh, biological chemical weapons. And Japan sounds the alarm. Now, that's, uh, that's the rhetoric, Stuart, that's coming out today. Well, of course, Kim is going to take the attitude, look, I'm doing all this because I keep getting being threatened. And I guess he legitimately could say that. Uh, Kim's a shakedown artist. And uh, I think maybe he's just going to go over the line this time. But it, it is kind of curious when you have a Japanese prime minister, I would assume, making or the government representing him, making that kind of a comment that the, basically the war is imminent, can break out at any time. Uh, yeah. So here we are, here we sit. Now, the other thing that you brought up and mentioned was this uh, Strategic Air Command uh, 24-7 alert. <clears throat> now, you were in SAC there for a while under uh, Curtis LeMay, who was at that point uh, General LeMay, and uh, he had razor home those B-52 guys into uh, getting all the aircraft off the ground in something like eight, nine minutes. I mean, it was really, in fact, I got a movie of it. It's almost incredible to watch it. I mean, as soon as the first one took off, the other one was right behind it, practically uh, nose to tail. And uh, an amazing feat, actually, to be able to get our our pilots and our bombs into the air. And I do remember that long time ago uh, when I was on Ethan Allen Air Force Base up there in Burlington, Vermont. And uh, they used to scramble their jets, and they had to get them off in a very few minutes and, and be gone. So why would, getting having said all that, why would they do that? Why would they be putting their crews on uh, 24-7, red alert, basically red alert? And why would he be calling up more and more pilots, uh, at least 1,000, or was it 1,500? I don't remember the number. 
uh, I'm not sure. Some of the numbers I saw was a thousand at least, and uh, and the uh, the SAC bombers never have been on the 24-hour alert system since the Cold War. Uh, they stopped yes. that. They got lax, and and you know they've never done that. But when I was in that, I mean, when those things took off, they was right on each other's tail, and I mean they tore the air wide open going up in the sky. They did leave quick, and. Um, and there's another report too that's kind of interesting, talking about weapons. Um, there is a uh, report out uh, from Two News. It says that the U.S. AH-64D Apache Longbow attack helicopters are to counter the North Korean invasion, and they're talking about deploying the U.S. Army Second Infantry Division uh, with the Apache heli- attack helicopters, and so. Here again, we've got more and more rhetoric, and then uh, True News also posted a hot button item today. It says South Korean intelligence is now warned that North Korea is near completion of its nuclear arsenal. So what's happening is it seems that uh, this thing, even though it's ramping up and up and up and up, uh, there may be an end date, and and there are rumors, and I want to repeat that, there are rumors being scattered about that uh, there are calls for President Donald Trump to preempt an attack or an invasion by North Korea, and we know what that means. That means we go first. I can't, (coughs) excuse me, for the life of me, figure out why they would employ attack helicopters and ground forces. Kim has the ability to wipe out 10 million people in Seoul in about 15 minutes. Uh, th- that doesn't make any sense unless the elite has decided they want to kill a whole bunch of people, including maybe Americans as well, because, you know, he has those subs. And as I've said before, we don't know what Kim has. And he has friends. He has friends in Russia. He has friends in China. He has friends in Iran. He's not friendless, Uh, particularly if this is a trap, which I firmly believe it is. I think the United States is just being led into a horrible, horrible trap. And I don't know. I mean, if I was Trump, I certainly wouldn't be using any of those kind of things. I'd be doing a little particle beam or a laser beam or microwave beam attack on him and and cook them, you know, before they could even react. Because they they only really do have probably 10 minutes to take this care of this thing, or it's going to go ballistic in more ways than yeah, one. That's, that's very interesting, and I don't know really if I believe it or not, but there is a uh, report on uh, quail alerts, uh, that is coming from uh, the U.K. news, if true, it says that uh, China has now warned Kim that another missile test by North Korea will mean war. It says with the shock warning of a Chinese blitz on the North Korean peninsula. So now whether that's true, I don't know. Uh, it, you know, I haven't heard officially if there's been a, a uh, threat from China against North Korea, but uh, the U.K. News, and I I did go to the U.K. News from the Q-Alerts, and it appears valid, so you may be, maybe there's more going on than we know, and didn't you say that you saw a map, a uh, futuristic map that didn't show Korea there? Yes, that's on Deagle. Uh, Deagle shows a population drop in the United States, uh, right now, we're at about 350 million. They underreported a little bit. It may even be a little higher than 350 million right today. In 2025, 54 million in America. That, uh, that's a drop of a uh, number of millions of people. North Korea is shown as nobody there by 2025. Go on. So <clears throat> Deagle, as you know, has a lot of uh, inside contacts, CIA, NSA, probably Mossad, probably uh, KGB, which is now the FSB, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
And people really do need to remember, always go back to Psalm 2. The kings and the rulers get together to eliminate God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And that's really the ultimate goal of all of this that you're watching. And uh, people just need to remember that as far as the Illuminati is concerned, there are no nations. It's all one big deal, and and they call the shots. And uh, I don't know, Larry. I, I just, uh, all the rhetoric, sooner or later, it's got to pop. And here we are, really, almost right on time, one could say, for the big pivot. If the big pivot hasn't already happened in the background in the spirit world, which it may already have, and we just don't know it yet. But it's getting very interesting. I'd like to read a prophecy, just part of one, that came the other day. And I think it has merit. I'm not telling anybody to believe it because <laughs> you get all these prophecies. A lot of them <laughs> don't have any sense to them at all. But anyway, this is supposed to be from the word of the Lord. Donald J. Trump. Now listen to this very, very carefully. Donald J. Trump cannot save America. I am the only one who could ever do that, but she would not have me. Remember Jeremiah? Won't be healed. Won't be healed. Donald is part of the plans of the evil one. He takes orders from them. Though he had different plans, and I think that's what he actually did have when he was elected and brought in to power. I really do believe he had different plans. And I think he was taken into the back room and just told, well, you know, you might have all these plans, but that's just not the way it's going to go. Now, in this thing it says, though he had different plans, he is now complicit with them. That's kind of a shocking remark. But when you look at who's surrounding him, when you look at nobody's in prison, when you look at Sessions, who's refusing to do anything about anything, uh, there's something going on. Has to be. Somebody's pulling the strings above uh, Trump and uh, probably above deep state even. After the fiery event, he talks about a fiery event that's coming to America. America will begin to cry out for her former leader, Barack Obama. He shall return, though not by election. The people of America will love him even more than before. He will be their hope. They will go along with his evil plans for them because he will be possessed by Satan himself, and he will charm and seduce them into worshiping him through his lying tongue and his lying signs and wonders. Most will take his mark after the great earthquakes, plural, and tsunamis, plural, will fall upon the land. Then the once great cities of America are completely destroyed by her enemies, as Babylon the Great will fall in one hour. That this will be done with nuclear bombs from America's enemies, from within and without. And we know who the within are because... We had reports, Larry, a long time ago about Spetsnav bringing in uh, suitcase nukes. Remember that? There were reports oh, all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and that, chimes, that chimes also. Remember the movie Jericho? You remember that one? Yes. I do. Wow. Okay, then it says Obama will move on to rule the world after he has accomplished his goal of destroying America while blaming a fall guy. Guess who that is? It's got to be Trump. (laughs) He will set up the beast government with the fallen ones who will be called the aliens when they are 
forced to earth. So they're not coming, according to this thing, they're not really necessarily coming too willingly. They're, they're, they're kind of forced to do it, probably on the Lord's timetables when he kicks them out. Obama, this is a good one here. Obama will be their leader, for he is one of them, meaning he is not of the race of Adam. You know, there's been a lot of stuff about that. Uh, yeah. For a long, long time, uh, as to exactly who is Obama. And nobody, honestly, nobody knows. Uh, even the sheriff out there, what was his name? Apollo? Joe R. Powell. Joe R. Powell. Yeah, and he, he, went, he, he even went to Hawaii and he proved that the birth certificate was total phony. In yeah, fact, one of the women him. who had something to do with that birth certificate mysteriously died in an airplane yeah, crash. And, and that, matter of fact, the spirit, after he did that investigation and brought out that information, they have done everything they could do to put him in federal prison. Yes. Uh, obviously, he was a bad boy and shouldn't have done what he did. But, but that, you see, leads us right back into what happened in Vegas. Uh, that thing was done, <clears throat> the massacre, so to speak, was done right in front of a pyramid and a sphinx. So that's a connection to Egypt. The guy's name was Paddock, as I said before, which means a stable or a pasturing where you exercise your racehorses. Basically, it's, it's an enclosure for uh, horses that are saddled up and mounted before a race. So that brings us to a race. What race? The Triple Crown race. Where? Guess who? American Pharaoh. One. Egyptian. Pharaoh. <laughs> King. <laughs> so Akhenaten isn't, in, you know, there have been all kinds of stuff. In fact, is it Roger Stone who was the director of movies? Oliver. Yeah. Maybe yeah, it's yeah, Oliver Stone. You're right. Yeah. Well, his Oliver son Stone. did all this work on cloning and how it appears, and it sounds ridiculous, but he said when you find one member of a family that looks suspiciously like an old Egyptian king, you could dismiss it. When you find that the wife, theoretically, looks like another clone from the same family in ancient Egypt, you might want to open one eye. But when you have two children that are likewise in very similar appearance, maybe you should pay more attention to what's really going on here. And it does sound bizarre, but the ties are there. American Pharaoh and, and the eclipse right over Little Egypt and Cairo. I mean, you know, it's like the Lord is telling us something about what's really going down right in front of our noses, and we just can't believe that these things could possibly be true. And I think that's one reason why they get away with so much. Okay, then there's another prophecy that you sent to me today. And uh, got any comments before I read it? I think it's a very important one to read. Yeah, that was that came from uh, Mina Lee Gribben, who's had some really incredible uh, experiences, and and this is rather telling. And she's she's been one a watchman on the wall that has really warned and warned about Obama for years. Yeah, what I liked about it is it it's almost the same thing in a but in a different, totally different setting that I had with uh, Obama. I want to share a disturbing encounter I had last week. It has taken me several days to process everything, determine how I am to present this. I decided to write about it instead of doing a video. I always advise those who follow this ministry to take all things to prayer. Well, that's another v valid proof that it's most likely true and not true. 
You know, I, I really shy away from those people who say, thus saith the Lord, and it never happens. Test the Spirit with the Holy Spirit. In other words, check it out. Is it true or not? We are living in such a critical season. And what I observe is that the church is more asleep now than ever. Well, that's true. The sheer number of Americans that will be hauled off into detention centers or killed in the near future will rock the church to the core. And although it is disheartening to see the deliberate blindness of the American church, I can only remind myself that I am just one person and I cannot save the world. Someone has already come to do that. So anyway, she says she found herself in a work cubicle with a young man who is a part of the ministry. We were working together, and I was training him for a task. Everything seemed normal, as if this was something I had been doing for a long time. I noticed that a manila folder-like chart was placed on my desk. I picked it up to observe it. I saw that it contained various symbols and languages on it in the form of a perfect circle. There were three languages, Arabic, Hebrew, and Egyptian hieroglyphics. Pay attention to the Egyptian part of this. My curiosity was sparked. I realized this was some sort of a chart with a coded message. The young man and myself began to work on decoding the message. Since I was not familiar with the other two languages, I started with what was written in Hebrew. As time seemed to go by, we were unable to understand the chart nor decode what was written. After a while, I noticed that a presence was standing over me. Someone had stepped at, uh, stopped at, rather, at my cubicle. When I looked up, I saw it was Obama. He was dressed in a suit and a beautiful embroidered tie, complete with a captivating smile that hides his senator, sinister motives. He held a red folder in his left hand. He said, it looks as though you're having a hard time trying to figure that out, he said, smiling bright. Yes, we can't seem to decode the message that is written on it. Gamatria, Obama replied, is Gamatria, and I t can tell you exactly what it says. It says the only God is the God within. The chart is about me. Obama then walks away, goes into a nearby office, and closes the door. The young man and myself stare at each other in sheer horror and amazement. You know what that means, right? I said, yeah, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. He just told us who he is, and the dream ended. Now, she goes into it, but I had a dream very similar to that. I don't ask anybody to believe it came from the Lord, but I was teaching prophecy, and I have no idea where I was or who was there, and then walks Obama. Big, big smile, very pleasant, walks over to me, and I said, you know you're Lucifer, don't you? And he said, yes, I know. And I woke up. And a lot of other Christians have been shown that he is a man of lawlessness. Yeah, yeah. So I th he has to come back, Larry. He has to come back. And remember that the in, in the race with American Pharaoh, he won three races. Well, he's only won two so far. But he's coming back for the third. Now, how they're going to do this, I don't know. I have no idea how they're going to make this happen. But I think it is going to happen, and I don't, I don't think Donald's going to be in for much longer. What do you think about all that? Oh, that's incredible. Uh, let me read this headline from Skywatch TV. Tom Horn just put it out. He yes. said, "If you ask most, he said, if you ask most people on the street if they had heard or read the Bible, they will look at you like you were from another planet." He <laughs> says, "Why have so many Americans stopped reading the Book of Faith?" And that's a good question. And I know you and I are getting messages from people. I know you mentioned the church there for a minute. And, uh, 
you know, we've been a little critical of the church. Well, the church is being critical back suddenly, isn't it? Well, I think what the, you know, we're apt to use phrases like all and whatnot, and it's obvious or should be obvious. We're not referring to all. And we got to remark, well, you and Larry think you're the only one to save. Never have I even made remotely such a comment. And, uh, you know, we, we work hard to put these programs together. And so one person said they thought that I was just too harsh. I haven't been harsh enough. If they think I'm harsh, wait until they meet Jesus Christ face to face. Wait until they watch when California goes into the sea or a tsunami wipes out New York City or Atlantic City or all the way down through Florida. I think if you asked the people who went through Harvey and almost lost their lives, I think they'd have a different opinion. I really do. Uh, we have a church now that is so soft and has forgotten. In fact, my ministry was based, as you know, on advancing what Jesus said, the ifs, ors, uh, buts, the conditional phrases that the Lord used, which modern Christianity has utterly rejected and claimed they aren't even there, like Psalm 2, it's not there. Well, it is there. And uh, the word's going to be fulfilled to the jot, to the letter, and people uh, better listen up. Uh, you know, if you fall unsaved, there's a, there's no way out of it. That's done. It's it. And uh, that's what the, the Lord has called me to do. And, of course, it's a very unpopular ministry. But the church has fallen into uh, what modern Christianity uh, is. And it's, uh, frankly, I call it a lie because if it's a half-truth, in the end, it's a whole lie, and Satan is good at half truths, but he does present the truth, but it's buried within lies. So, you know, people have got to have a little more discernment, and as far as America and no hope, the only hope America has is in Jesus Christ. There is no other hope. If you're putting your hope in Donald Trump, uh, you got your, it's in the wrong place. If you put your hope in Barack Obama when he comes back, it's in the wrong place. There's only one place that there is any hope at all, and uh, it's through the, the grace of the Lord that he brought the protocol uh, to come into salvation. So that's about all I got to say. I think people should read in Matthew. I think it starts around chapter, uh, Matthew 7, around verse 20, 21, 22, where he rejects millions of Christians. And they really need to read his answer to them because all the answers I've ever got from people are not the answer that Jesus Christ gives. And they really should read what he said to them because it's stern and there's no compassion, there's no mercy, there's nothing there, just a stern rebuke. Yeah, people need to listen to it. Any comments before we close, Larry? I went a little long yeah, on the prophecies. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I was just going to mention a real interesting report on Debka file that is probably not out there yet, but uh, it says the Kurds win Syrian oil under a secret U.S.-Russian deal uh, as wow. a prize for Raqqa. It says the Kurds capture Raqqa and a big Alamor oil field in eastern uh, there's their province in Syria. So Russia's given uh, the Kurds uh, the oil. Well, this this whole Middle East situation, I think, as, as uh, Stan Dale said, is over energy. It, the bottom line is dollars and energy, basically. Anyway, went a little long there on the uh, prophecies, but I thought everybody should should realize that Obama is in those right to the end. Anyway, thanks, Larry, for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you again soon. Night.